see the entourage of George Foreman as they're set to come to the ring in the Reno Sparks Convention Center, Reno, Nevada. He's not covered in anything flashy. It's a plain red terry cloth robe. He's chewing bubble gum and blowing bubbles. That Foreman would weigh in at much more than 257. As we look at the tail of the tape, Foreman, older by 15 years, but you wouldn't know it. He is in a second career and he is in a second life. The man thinks young, the man performs like many half his age. We got smoke to go for the fighters in the dressing room. I'm crushing again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. All right, we're set to start at round number one of a scheduled 10 rounder between George Foreman and Jimmy Ellis. This is coming to you from the Reno Sparks Convention Center in Reno, Nevada. And here we go. George Foreman heavily favored in this bout. Some of the sports books not even taking odds. One other, 20 to 1 in favor of George Foreman. Jimmy Ellis coming out of George, going straight rights and left jabs to the body. Well, if anyone had any questions whether Jimmy Ellis would be game or not, he's coming out game. George throws a big lift, a hard lift to the body of Jimmy Ellis. And you know that all of that 257 pounds is behind each punch. George Foreman's in the red corner, Jimmy Ellis in the blue corner. George is in the orange and purple, Jimmy Ellis in the black and the blue. Jimmy throws a wild on, left, back, it's most of it is arm. There's a left to the head of George Foreman as he covers. George throwing left jabs, one glancing off the nose of Jimmy Ellis. There's a wild left by George Foreman that misses entirely. Left jab to the face of Jimmy Ellis by George Foreman. George throws another left and another left. Two out of three connecting. There's a left by Jimmy Ellis. He tries to get through the body of George Foreman. Connects with a right to the head. There's a left to the head of George Foreman. Another right to the body. George Foreman said uh, just yesterday that these are dangerous fighters because they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. They're young, they're wild, and they're strong. He has every bit of respect for his opponent, Jimmy Ellis. Blood beginning to show on the nose of Jimmy Ellis as George connects with a lumbering left. There's a left by Jimmy Ellis who glances to the head of 
George Foreman. George counters with a left. There's another left. Another left to the face. He tries for that right. George Foreman is known for an overhand right. His arms are massive. The power behind those punches, incredible. Jimmy Ellis beginning to show red in the face and blood on the bridge of his nose. Ellis comes out of the camp of 10 Goose Boxing as George Foreman wades in with left-right combinations to the face of Jimmy Ellis. There's a left and another left and a right that connects to Jimmy Ellis. Foreman seemingly connecting at will to the face of Jimmy Ellis as we come to the end of round number one. We're set for round number two. In a scheduled 10 round bout between George Foreman and Jimmy Ellis. Foreman in the orange and purple trunks, Ellis in a black and blue, and that might be important of things to come for Jimmy Ellis, as he has been unable to score against the big guy. Yes, George Foreman is a massive target, but he does not give it up easy as he connects with the left jab to the face of Jimmy Ellis. There's another left that's partially covered. Come on back with it, George. Come on back with it. Get close. Come on. Like most right-handers, George Foreman will set with the left jab for the big right hand as he goes to the body with the right. Jimmy Ellis counters with a left shot to the head of Foreman. It does very little as he covers. the left of the body of Ellis. You know that's got to hurt. George Foreman weighing in at 257 pounds. There's a left that glances off the right glove of George Foreman. Both men exchanging, and that looks like it sent Jimmy Ellis into a land that he didn't want to go so early. Sensing the kill, George Foreman moves in. Jimmy Ellis tries to cover. He is a gamer. There's a left off the head of Jimmy Ellis whose legs begin to buckle. Foreman knows he has Jimmy Ellis where he wants him. It's now a matter of time. As Foreman sets his man, Jimmy Ellis barely holding on. Richard Steele looking into his eyes. There's a left uppercut as Foreman moves away. There's another left that staggers Ellis. Ellis is out on his feet as he holds on to George Foreman. They're above us right now. Ellis is holding on to George Foreman. There is a right to the chin of Jimmy Ellis, yet he is game. He still stands on. There's another combination that sends him reeling against the ropes. There's a left to the head, a right to the head, and Richard Steele comes between them, but only briefly. He doesn't want to be even remotely accused of stopping it prematurely once again, but you have to wonder how much longer this can go on. Ellis comes out of his corner, wobbly at the get-go. George Foreman looking very fresh, measuring his man. Get closer, dog. Get closer. Foreman throws a left-right combination again. I do not think that this is going to go much longer into this round. Ellis's game, he throws a right to the chin of George Foreman. He's coming after George. His left hand gets stuck in the ring. George hits him with a left jab to the chin. There's a left that misses, a left that hits him on the face. Ellis counters, but those left rights of George Foreman get through, and there's a lot to get through. There's a left flush on the face of Jimmy Ellis. Foreman throws a left right again. Ellis counters, but he is staggered. There's a right uppercut by George that misses. There's a left uppercut. There's a left to the head of Ellis. Another left, left and right combination, that overhand right going to the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis trying to hold on. There's now a 
cut under the left eye of Jimmy Ellis as he staggers backwards. George Foreman globs toward him. Jimmy Ellis' face is beat red as Foreman continues his left jab, right cross onslaught. Foreman looking to measure his man. There's a left to the face of Jimmy Ellis. And Richard Steele stops the bout. It's hard to question Richard Steele's stoppage of the fight. Look at that right by George Foreman as he connects to the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis is game, but every one of those punches of Foreman's are connecting. Ellis has very little defense against a 257 pound George Foreman who now is 70 and three with 66 knockouts. As you see, Ellis trying to hold on. Ellis did not go to the canvas, but there is very little left in him as George Foreman continues to score at will. Ellis moves into his man at that particular point. There was very much in George Foreman's favor and very little left of Jimmy Ellis. Now that left was the most telling blow of the round. That set up a right and that set Richard Steele to stop the fight. Take a look at that left again. It was flush on the face of Jimmy Ellis and at will. George pecked at the head of Jimmy Ellis, causing Richard Steele to say no more. George Foreman smiles at Angelo Dundee. There's a disappointed Jimmy Ellis, but he was game. official time, one minute, 36 seconds of the third round, awarded by TKO Victory. The march goes on, ladies and gentlemen, for the winner by TKO Big George Hall. George Foreman, a favorite wherever he goes, and that includes Reno, Nevada. As you can see, a very few punches landed by Jimmy Ellis. Foreman had the fight from the get-go, landing 70 percentile. In just a moment, we're going to go to the center of the ring where Larry Merchant will interview the winner by technical knockout, George Foreman. With the once and perhaps future king, George Foreman. All right, George, uh, were you feeling sorry for him there in the second round? Did you let up? Well, you know, I told you earlier in the dressing room, when a guy comes to George Foreman, it makes me a boxer. I hit him with a lot of hard shot and kind of hurt. He must have been a hell of a football player. <laughs> A heavenly of a football player, that's what's hurt. So you're saying that you really did carry him a little bit, maybe out of respect for the fact that he no, was no, trying he so hard. No, hard, and I thought he was going to fall, and I let him loose for a moment. I said, he's not going to last long. The next thing I know, he started hitting me back. The guy's got a chin like a piece of stone. He clipped you a few times. Any of them uh, sting? Yeah, he hit me with a good right hand. It really hurt, and the left hook in the side is still hurting right now. So the guy was a good puncher. I don't know who told me he wasn't anything. You see how you can believe everything? I'm hurting on my left, uh, right side, and I got hit with a right hand. I'm in good, bad shape, but I'm going to make it. What, what are the plan? Let's. We're going to take a look at the end there. Would you describe it for us? Well, I'm right now just trying to find him with a hook and get it over with because he's taking the hardest shots I've hit. I think he's going to fall now. Don't hit him. Don't hit him. He's going to fall. But watch as he comes back and start hitting me. You just can't. No respect for his elders. No respect <laughs> for his elders. I need Next time I fight, I need to have my gray hair. Uh, that'll show him. That'll teach him something. But uh, I'm a, I was a little too experienced as far as not knowing not to get in there and wade in there and try to mix it up with him, just stand back with the left jab. If I hadn't had that experience, he could have gotten a little... Got in there, yeah, but so much experience. I've had the guys that stand off of me for years and use that jab. Now I'm giving it back to them. What are your plans for the next six months or so as far as boxing is concerned? The ultimate goal is to get down to the back 235. I'm 257 this time. I'll be 235 the next time. Then there's a great Olympian, uh, Riddick Bowe. 
uh, that my promoters have been talking about, and I think we're going to draw and have the whole world coming up to see two Olympians fight again. And then uh, if Holyfield is ready, I'll fight him. Thank you very much, George. Back to you, Jim and Gil.